Today, we'll be talking about Mexican drug lord Jose Rodrigo Arhechiga Gamboa, aka El Chino Antrax. We'll be giving you a brief rundown of his life story, including his criminal ventures with the Sinaloa cartel. Stay tuned to find out about the assassinations he ordered and his game of cat and mouse with the law. It'll be up to you guys to answer this question. Is El Chino Antrax worth the hype? Born in Culiacan, Sinaloa on June 15, 1980, Arhechiga was raised as a relatively normal schoolboy. His father was a government official in Sinaloa and his mother a devoted housewife. Arhechiga had dreams of becoming a pilot in the Mexican army, but these were crushed when he failed the physical examination due to his skin condition, psoriasis. Lacking direction, he turned to his old school friends, affiliated with Ismael El Mayo Zambada Garcia, high-ranking kingpin in the Sinaloa cartel. Starting off with small tasks, he eventually moved up the ranks and worked as the bodyguard of Zambada's son, Vicente Zambada Niebla, dubbed El Vicentillo. In 2008, a bloody feud broke out in the Sinaloa cartel between Joaquin Guzman, famously known as El Chapo, and leader drug traffickers the Beltran Leyva brothers. After brutal assassinations and gunfights, the Beltran Levas formed their own cartel. Staying loyal to El Chapo and the Zambadas, Arhechiga and his criminal partner Jesus Peña formed Los Antrax, a sub-branch of the Sinaloa cartel which provided armed security forces to El Mayo Zambada. Arhechiga's close connections to the Zambada family eventually earned him the task of overseeing the Culiacan Plaza, the turf and place of residence of the Zambadas. Arhechiga would also go on to play an important logistical role in the trafficking of cocaine, methamphetamines, and marijuana into the US and was a close aide to El Chapo before his arrest in 2014. His violent Sicario organization was responsible for a number of homicides in the state of Sinaloa, in connection with the drawn-out gang war with the Beltran Leva cartel. The feud almost cost Arhechiga his life when his squadron was ambushed at a Culiacan car wash in November 2008, killing one of his partners. The most notable assassination that Arhechiga ordered was that of Francisco Rafael Arellano Felix drug lord, money launderer, and leader of the Tijuana cartel. On October 18, 2013, Francisco Rafael was celebrating his 64th birthday at Hotel Marabella's Banquet Hall in Los Cabos. The party was attended by all sorts of people of influence, businessmen, politicians, sport figures, and entertainers, as well as the drug pin's family. Around 8 p.m., a black SUV drove into the property and parked in front of the ballroom, a man dressed as a clown stepped out of the back seat of the vehicle and walked towards the hotel's kitchen door. He then walked into the ballroom, where a band was playing traditional music, identified Arellano at the center of the room, and walked towards him. At about three feet away from the drug lord, the clown pulled out a pistol and shot Arellano point blank in the head, killing him on the spot before fleeing out the back door. What was the motive? Well, Arhechigo was new in town. He'd moved to Los Capos in 2011 and he wanted to pass a message that Los Antrax were running things from there on out. Arhechiga also had a strong social media presence. By 2013, he was one of the richest men in Mexico and he liked to exhibit his lavish gangster lifestyle to his fans and followers under various aliases. Among these were El Comedante Antrax, The Fifth Element, and Scarface Reborn to name a few. Guns, cash rolls, flashy cars, champagne, and hardcore workouts were just some of the recurring themes in his posts. Many of his admirers have written narco corridos, or drug ballads, in his honor, showing praise for his alleged gentlemanly habits and ostentatious lifestyle. He's also uploaded pictures with famous celebrities, including Paris Hilton, as well as photos of his travels around Europe. Though his face is always either hidden or blurred, his travel pictures actually paved the way to his downfall. US federal agents were able to track his movements through careless social media posting, and he was arrested at Amsterdam Airport on December 31st, 2013. Arhechiga was cautious to travel under a fake name, as well as undergoing plastic surgery to change his appearance. He even altered his fingerprints. So how did enforcers identify him at the airport? Through his skull ring, the insignia of the Sinaloa cartel, which he regularly featured in his social media posts. 
he spent half a year at a maximum security prison in the Netherlands before being extradited to the U.S. on July 10, 2014, where he remained in custody for six years in San Diego. In 2020, he was sentenced to over seven years of prison, pleading guilty for facilitating the Sinaloan cartel in violent crime and for participation in at least 50 drug shipments from Mexico to the U.S. Before his sentence, the top Sicario said the following words, I am truly ashamed. I promise that I'll never stray back on the wrong path. I would like to be able to make an honest living. Reportedly, this honest living would be in the construction industry. He was released and placed under house arrest in early March, due for five more years. But over two months later, he was reported missing by his probation office. Arhechiga had managed to escape. Details of Arhechiga's movements and whereabouts after May 9th are unclear. But on May 16th, his dead body was found wrapped in cloth and with a bag over his head, in a black SUV ditched on a dirt road in Culiacan. His sister, also found dead in the car along with her husband, was the vehicle's owner. It is believed that Arachiga was assassinated by members of the Sinaloa cartel for having collaborated with federal agents in order to shorten his sentence. Arachiga's turbulent, short life had come to an end, dying at 39 years of age as a traitor to his own organization. So what do you think? Did El Chino Antrax deserve his bloody fate, or did he have it coming? Was he a good guy trying to be bad, or a bad guy trying to be good? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section and whether you think Arachiga is worth the hype. And don't forget to check out the links below to learn more about the history of Mexico's notorious cartels.